This map says a lot. The five largest earthquakes in recorded history have happened on the Pacific Rim within the last 70 years. Number one is the 9.5 striking Chile in 1960. Number two, the 9.2 Alaska quake in 1964. Number three, a 9.1 in Indonesia in 2004. Number four, the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan, a 9.0. And number five, another 9.0 off eastern Russia in 1952. Every subduction zone has experienced an earthquake in modern times except ours, the Cascadia Fault running the coast from northern California through western Canada. The fault that gave us the ghost forest hasn't shaken in 319 years. What will the next quake be like? So you see the hypocenter, that's where the earthquake starts. So the the seismic waves are radiating outwards, and these lines here are going to show you the shaking at these various cities. So these are more accurate than any of the estimates that we've done in the past for magnitude 9 earthquakes. Erin Wirth is with the U.S. Geological Survey. She's part of the M9 project, a collaboration between the USGS and the University of Washington. M9 stands for a magnitude 9 megaquake. And using supercomputers, she was part of a team running 50 scenarios which produced dramatically different results for different cities depending on where the earthquake starts. So you can see here Crescent City is starting to shake. Now shaking is reaching Aberdeen. Now it's starting to reach Portland. And finally reaching Seattle. And so the size of these wiggles tell you how strong the shaking is. And then you can also see that Seattle has pretty strong shaking. And the reason for that is that Seattle sits within a deep sedimentary basin. So that sedimentary basin amplifies the ground shaking, causing Seattle to shake more. But start the earthquake from the opposite direction, the results for the region's biggest city are far less severe, even though it's closer and the waves of shaking energy don't pile up. So in this scenario, you can see the hypocenter is now um, off northwest Washington. Seismic waves again are radiating outwards. Shaking is hitting Seattle and Aberdeen first. So this is actually much less. A giant earthquake lasting around five minutes would be bad by itself. But remember, these types of quakes are a double whammy because they also generate huge tsunami waves. You can see the wave propagate towards the outer coast and it reaches the outer coast in about 15, 20 minutes. And in this computer simulation, we learn that even more inland waters, including Puget Sound, Seattle, and Tacoma, are more vulnerable than previously thought. About five feet in Seattle, but the waves could top 10 feet in Tacoma's commencement bay. Well, I've showed it to a couple people and their reaction is, oh, and I think it hits home because at this level they can pick out where they live. Karina Forsen is the chief hazards geologist for the Washington Geological Survey, part of the Department of Natural Resources. This is really important to visualize how tsunami waves travel through Washington because we do have such complicated waterways and this unique Puget Sound environment. Work has already started on specific tsunami models for localized areas, even currents. This is Bellingham. You have huge oil tankers waiting offshore, and so you can really see some of these whirlpools and eddies develop as the wave travels over shallow areas and around peninsulas. And while we think of tsunami waves, the water forming those waves is pulled from other areas in blue first, the deepest red more than 10 feet. For some places on the coast, it doesn't reflect the full reality. The inundation in some of these areas is over 60 feet. It's all a work in progress. In Olympia, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.